up everybody my name is chad you're watching downshift pass and this this one i'm really excited about this is the 2022 hyundai sonata inline and that's right folks i did say the inline version of this hyundai sonata so of course we're going to take a look at all the features inside and out we are going to take it on a drive. We're going to do the audio test. And if that sounds like something that you are interested in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can watch this and my other content as well. But let's go ahead and get started. All right, folks, well, let's go ahead and get started with the exterior styling here. Hyundai really made this a love it or hate it design. I am on the side of loving it. I think it has some really dynamic looking features. One being this headlight here. Now this is an all LED unit. So you have an LED low beam, LED high beam, excuse me, LED high beam and an LED daytime running light. So when this is not flashing, it's actually your LED uh, daytime running light. And it runs up the hood here and then turns into a chrome strip right at this break point. And that chrome strip rolls, runs along the body of the vehicle. And I think it looks really awesome, especially, especially at nighttime. I'll try to insert some footage of it here now. And then the grill here, some people say looks like a fish and from certain angles, I can kind of see it. I will say this car is pretty hard to film and try to get its best angles. You have to go to the dealership and see it in real life. It's truly a striking design. Now this all black grill here is unique to the inline. You have larger brake ducts here as well as just a larger grill overall. And then of course you have your inline badging up front. Now, as we move along to the side of the vehicle here, I think again, it looks really good, a little bit bigger bigger in real life than I anticipated it being. But there's that chrome line that runs along the strip of the car and then kind of curves up at the back end and goes to the front there. And then of course you have your inline badging here, black mirror caps as well as turn signals there. And take a look at these wheels. Now the inline comes pretty much fully loaded. You do have one optional feature to get and that's $200. And it's these continental summer tires that you get. Now when they are cleaned up and shiny, they have a nice little design that you can kind of see on them let's see if i can gather it on the back here kind of hard to tell in video but i think it looks really really neat very german like almost in the attention to detail on it then your rocker panel down there is also blacked out you do have a nice large panoramic sunroof up top and then these door handles i just have to show you now listen to them they have so much heft and they just sound really really good i absolutely adore that now as we swing along to the back here this is going to be my favorite part of the sonata when you see this car at nighttime the light show that it gives is just really awesome now i really wish hyundai would have made these turn signals led on the end line that would have just set it off just right but you do have your light bar that you're seeing on pretty much every car nowadays of course you have your hyundai badge which actually acts as a trunk release which opens up to a rather nice size trunk that i have my items in as you can see here and still plenty of space and then under here is where your spare tire lives rear seats do fold down at the pull of these two tabs here just pull it there and you can push it down on the inside or the outside and then of course you have your sonata badging here and the only way to differentiate that this is an inline from the rear because there is no badging are these quad outlets at the bottom of the vehicle here also blacked out and then of course you have a rear diffuser because sports car why not but let's go ahead and take a listen to these All right, folks, and what you just heard is this right here. This is Hyundai's 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, produces 290 horsepower and a strong 311 pound feet of torque, all made it through an eight speed wet dual clutch transmission. Uh, gas mileage is rated at 23 in the city, 33 on the highway for a combined mileage of 27 miles per gallon. And I've been averaging about 15 miles per gallon, but just wait for the drive and I'll explain. I'll explain how I got there. Now, folks, before we get into the drive, of course, we're going to step into the interior. Let me show you this key here. This is Hyundai's corporate key. You have a lock, unlock, hole for your trunk, hole for panic, as well as a remote start on this vehicle. No smart pock. But I am back here for good reason. Now, if I have this key in my pocket and I walk up to the trunk of the vehicle, watch this. It beeps, the lights flash, and the trunk 
greets me with an opening. So pretty awesome feature there. If you have a lot of groceries in your hand or the kids are in your hand or something like that, you're able to get into the trunk. Now, if you come along the side here and want to get in the car, you just put your hand behind the handle and it will unlock. If you want to lock it, you just put your hand on the handle it'll lock right up so let's go ahead and hop inside now of course hand behind the handle and then these beautiful filling door handles i cannot believe i'm in love with a door handle but here we are now as we step into the vehicle hyundai of course greets you with a welcome let me shut the door so you can hear it very genesis like you got the hyundai badge there and then the start button is on the right hand side here so i'm going to go ahead and put my foot on the brake and start her up so you have nice sweeping gauges a picture of the vehicle and just the interior of this car guys honestly in my opinion best in class it is absolutely beautiful in here i'm going to go ahead and close this very large one touch panoramic sunroof i love how the shade closes so quickly I'll keep the shade open just so we can get some sunlight. But again, it's just a really, really nice interior. Now on the inline, you do have your red stitching on the door as well as on the seats here. And this is all padded leather. It's very soft touch material. I love how the handle is hidden here to close the door. And I love how this handle is integrated to open the door, uh, integrated into this strip here. It just looks really awesome. Of course, you have your tweeter here for your 12 speaker Bose audio system. Stick around for the audio test for that. This this right here is a really nice filling material. It's a little different than this typical plastic that you see here. So again, that attention to detail that Hyundai has honestly is unmatched in this class. Now this steering wheel here also has this red stitching. It is leather wrapped and then perforated on the side here. It is not a heated steering wheel, which would have been really awesome. I thought it would have been. Of course you have your Hyundai logo here. And then if you have an N logo at the bottom of the steering wheel, not a flat bottom, but this car doesn't need that but you do have your end logo now this is going to be a 12 inch digital gauge cluster it is fully customizable this one is a 10.25 inch gauge cluster sorry if the air is blowing too loud it's a really warm day in atlanta uh, but i'm going to go ahead and just show you uh, some of the features here now you do have different drive modes in this vehicle your drive mode selector is in the middle of the dash here so i'm going to go ahead and let's cut that off this is sport mode then you have your Sport Plus, which is just going to disconnect your traction control and everything else. And then you have custom mode as well. And if you do custom mode, you can come right over to the middle screen, press settings. And then you can control your powertrain, the steering, as well as your traction control. That's what ESC is. And then drive mode alert, alert change, just different features that you have right there. But I think it looks really awesome, the transitions that they do. They definitely come a long way from when they first introduced this gauge cluster. So I'm gonna keep this in sport mode because this is downshift pass. That's what we do on this channel here. Now, of course you have your steering wheel controls here on the left-hand side. It's mostly your Bluetooth functions and on the right hand Hand side it's going to be all your cruise control functions you have some nice paddle shifters here which again we'll talk about more so in the drive that controls the dual clutch transmission and look how this is just integrated into the dash i mean it looks built for this vehicle it's not just a tacked on ipad looking tablet nice responsive screen very very big screen it does come standard with android auto as well as apple carplay the only thing i don't like about it and you'll see it i have a, a samsung phone so Android and it only shows on half the screen so I wish it showed on uh, the full screen now if you click map this car does have navigation and the native navigation in this vehicle is truly amazing I mean it is really awesome i think hyundai did a really good job of just having their own native thing you can pull up two screens for some reason which i thought was always odd and then of course you have your buttons on the, this side here it's like a tactile button you don't really get much feedback if you push it but radio and then of course if you click media that'll pull up your different bluetooth functions uh if you have your android auto connected sirius xm and then of course you have sounds of nature which you always hear people talk about but listen you can choose from lively forest calm sea waves i mean this will put me to sleep who wants to listen to this when they drive rainy day i 
then you have open air cafe. Warm fireplace. And then snowy village. So I guess because this car has some self-driving function, Hyundai wants you to take a nap as you're driving. Just kidding, please don't do that. Please do not bring any lawsuits upon me. Now this is going to be your climate control functions down here. And you do have your driver as well as your passenger side. It does come standard with heated seats, uh, ambient lighting as well that runs along the length of the vehicle except not in the back. And as we move down below, you do have your wireless charging pad, a 12 volt charger, USB uh, charging as well. And this right here is going to be your transmission selector. So of course you have your park, reverse, which pulls up this nice large camera here and you have different functions for the camera. So you can go wide angle or you can go uh, down angle as well and in different settings for your display. So brightness, uh, daylight, nighttime, contrast, just different camera settings that you have when the car is in reverse. Of course you have neutral and then you have drive and then of course you have another in badge here drive mode selector like i said before auto hold function which is for your parking brake two cup holders nice size and then here you're able to slide a phone in and i have a pretty thick phone this is a samsung z fold and it slides right in there with no problem so you're able to keep it there when you're doing your spirited driving then of course in here you have a your middle console for storage i have a nice large cup that actually fits perfectly in there and your glove compartment so up front it's really really nice really great place to be the heated seats work really well you guys know that's really important to me Hyundai did a really really good job with this front area let's go ahead and step to the back all right, folks, and here we are in the back of the Sonata. Pretty, pretty good place to be. Definitely enough room for adults back here. Of course, you have your uh, window controls, which believe it or not, it is not one touch. I was so shocked to see that, but you know what? All that R&D was spent on the engineering of this car and I'm not mad. You do have plenty of leg room back here, knee room, place to put your feet under the seat should you need it. I have the seat in my uh, driving position. I am five foot eight. And again, it's very, very comfortable back here. Very airy cabin as well. It does run, the sunroof does run to the back pretty nicely. And then down below you do have two vents as well as a USB port for for your passengers just one and pretty much on the same side now the ambient lighting does not run back here so at nighttime it is pretty dark but the seats are comfortable you do have three headrests it's not too tightly bolstered like the front seats which i don't think i spoke about but they are nicely bolstered i'll talk about that more in the drive uh, but otherwise really really good place to be armrests two cup holders pretty standard stuff but guys let's go ahead and go for a drive all right folks sitting out here in the 2022 hyundai sonata inline out here in beautiful west side park in atlanta georgia i probably should stop giving out my recording location but uh out here in the beautiful park definitely if you have a chance to visit you should come on up now this car always starts itself in normal mode no matter what your last drive mode was now again your drive mode selector is down here and take a look at that really cool animation so that's normal and that is sport now this is the perfect place to do a launch now to do a launch this car does have launch control you have to put it in sport plus mode which dis disables trash control then you come along to the left side here and turn off all the electronic nannies press and hold traction and stability control disable so then you have right foot on the brake or left foot on the brake <laughs> right foot on the gas it says you can adjust the rpm here with your cruise control button and then you just let it rip Guys, whew, that one almost left me speechless. 
now this car is quick i have seen uh, some publications say it does zero to 60 in about five seconds the highest i've seen was 5.3 seconds i'll let you know that that uh acceleration run was a little bit uphill and this car goes and goes and does not stop pulling it is the powertrain is amazing Now you probably noticed on that uh, launch control launch there, the car does have a lot of wheel hop and a lot, a lot of wheel spin. That's something that's kind of hard to modulate in this vehicle. You will notice that if you just uh, stomp on it without using a launch control, um, it shakes a lot harder than that. I'll you know, try to do that for you guys, but it almost feels like you're tearing the car up. But of course this is front wheel drive so that is to be expected now as far as this eight speed uh transmission goes now when you have it in sport mode or sport plus mode i'll cut it back down to sport mode um it is in my opinion it's really aggressive it's, it's a pretty aggressive uh transmission now it is a dual clutch so it's going to be very fast very quick as it should be but it's a little bit more aggressive than i anticipated it being but it's not something that's completely uncomfortable. My favorite part about the transmission though is when you put it back into its normal mode, which would be probably the comfort setting in any other vehicle, the behavior of this car completely changes. It's quite impressive how much more relaxed it is, much more refined it is. If I were to floor it, the pool is a little bit more uh, linear. It doesn't feel as aggressive. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, it, it still puts you in your seat. It just doesn't feel as hardcore. And I really appreciate that they were able to, um, all right. I do appreciate that they were able to do such a difference between the two to really make you want to drive it. I'm going to put it back in its sport mode here. And from this stop sign, I'm just going to floor it. As you can see, it goes, but it feels like you're hurting the car. But you know, that's one thing I really have always appreciated about front wheel drive cars. You know, they initially built them for economy and gas mileage and gas savings, weight savings and all that they say. However, they're just so much fun when they have a little bit too much power and a little bit too much torque. Now this one has 311 pound feet of torque, which is a lot. I mean, that's just a lot of power uh, to put to put through to the front wheel. So uh, when you have this thing in sport mode, the wheels are gonna break, especially if you're in a corner or if you're turning out of somewhere, they're going to spin. But it is a more controllable spin, if that makes sense. It doesn't, um, it doesn't, it has never made me feel unsafe or feel like I didn't know what the front end was doing. I'm just gonna try a launch control one more time just cuz so we're gonna go sport mode sometime the launch control is finicky let's see if it is this time foot on brake foot on gas here we go gosh jeez <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow, and I love the torque steer. You feel it sliding, the, the wheel is this way, the car's going this way, it's maximum fun. I'm really impressed with the power of this vehicle. Now one really neat thing that this car has is you can control the sound um, that it makes in the vehicle. So if you go to your settings, you can, it's strong, medium, low, and then you can cut it completely off. Um, I like to keep it in strong just because I think it sounds really cool, but let me see if I can find that setting for you here. Go to vehicle. 
active sound design they call it so it's really cool and it actually works as you're driving so let me slow down for a bit here and try to so it's in strong now so i don't know if you were able to hear that difference but even with it off the engine doesn't sound terrible it sounds like your standard four-cylinder turbocharged engine which of course is going to um, lessen the experience a little bit because of that turbocharger but it doesn't sound bad whatsoever but i keep it in strong uh, of course you again it's normal and soft actually or completely off but if you keep it in strong i think you'll be more than satisfied it doesn't sound uh, too artificial now i want to talk about seat comfort a little bit now the seats in this car are eight-way power adjustable on the driver's side of course forward back up down but you do um, have the ability to control the side bolsters which i absolutely love and i think that's really important in a vehicle like this first and foremost the sonata is a family sedan of course a large family sedan and it fits kind of weirdly in a space of having performance um in a class that's not really performance oriented but i mentioned that because the side bolsters can either close on you really really tightly or you can just open them up completely where it's not too uncomfortable which i think is really important to fit a wide range of people so for a person like me sometimes i want it to hug me tight when i'm really feeling like getting on it and sometimes you're just not in the mood for that you just want to cruise in normal mode let the car do its thing and just relax a little bit um, so i do love the seats in this car they're absolutely comfortable of course you have three level heated seat driver and passenger as well they are a uh leather as well as an alcantara style seat so you have partial leather partial alcantara now i wanted to talk to you about gas mileage as well i know i promised you that now right now i think earlier i said i was averaging 15 right now i'm averaging about uh 14.4 now it did go down a little bit because the car was sitting as i was filming some content um but honestly i cannot keep my foot off the gas of this car it is truly shocking um the performance that it has i just completely was not expecting for it to be the performer that it is so again 23 in the city 33 on the highway which is really good for 293 or excuse me 290 horsepower um, combined at 27 i'm sure if i was to go on a long road trip you know i would be able to get that gas mileage when the tank was full it said i was getting above 400 430 420 or so um miles on a full tank so average driving i'm sure pretty sure i could be able to achieve that around 27 or 30 miles per gallon range but this goodness gracious <laughs> golly even when it's moving and it got a little torque steer i mean it hits those shifts off brilliantly absolutely brilliantly this is in sport plus mode this car does not have any type of adaptive suspension um, so of course they made the dampers and the springs a little bit more stiff than your standard sonata but i think it fits the mold perfectly of not being too stiff but not being too soft whatsoever the regular sonata is a very comfortable cruiser um, this is like a cruiser that you can take on the highway it won't beat you up but as soon as you hit a corner you are going to have a lot of fun 
Now, with the stickier tires as well, Hyundai did a really good job. It's only a $200 option for summer tires now, so you won't be able to use them year round if you live in extreme cold clim climates. But for $200, please spring for those tires. Like I said, they even have a really awesome looking design on them as well, just to kind of add to the personality of the vehicle. And let's talk self-driving functions. If you've done any type of research on this vehicle, you'll see a lot of people say that Hyundai Kia Genesis has one of the best self-driving functionalities uh, in the game. I'm talking rivaling Tesla, Cadillac Super Cruise. It is up there with them. Now, with this Hyundai, it does have um, pretty much a lane centering system. So it won't switch lanes for you, but it maintains the lane um, brilliantly. It maintains distance amazingly. And one thing I love about it, two things I love about it the most. One being that when you set the speed, it tries its best to get there as fast as possible. Almost a little too aggressive for me. Uh, sometimes I'm like, whoa, but hey, the car knows what it is doing. And the second thing for me is going to be how long you can actually keep your hands off the wheel. I timed it and the longest I did was two minutes and 32 seconds. I could not believe it. And that doesn't sound like a long time until you're behind the wheel of a self-driving car Tesla. And I mean, it's doing what it needs to do brilliantly, but every 45 seconds, you know, it shows every time you do something, boom, it shows up on the dash. You need to put your hand on the wheel, put your hand on the wheel. I love this car because it doesn't require you to do that at nearly as often as some of the other systems. The car also has the upgraded uh, it's standard on this vehicle, but upgraded on the other Sonatas. 12 speaker Bose audio system, and it is a pretty good system. Um, but of course, this is downshift pad, so we're going to do an audio test. I'll give you my thoughts, and then I want to hear your thoughts in the uh, comments. So as I play the music, I'm going to let the car self drive, and you go ahead and watch the timer as well to see how long it lets me keep my hands off the wheel. But without further ado, let's roll into the audio test. Still self-driving. 
Uh, before we get into that though, that's the audio system again, 12 speakers, Bose audio system uh, with the center point audio as well. And I think it sounds pretty good for a car in this class, a car at this price point, it's pretty on par uh, with the top of the top. Better than the Honda, of course. Honda really needs to upgrade their audio systems. Toyota needs to upgrade their audio systems. Um, it rivals up there with the Acuras and the low end, lower end of the BMWs and things of that nature, which I feel like Hyundai usually finds itself in, which is kind of that middle ground. So car is still self-driving. I don't know how long it has been yet. Speeding up for me here. And again, you know, I'm in Atlanta and if you know Atlanta, you know traffic and you know construction. And through this construction all the way down 285, I mean, it handled it brilliantly. It did have some moments, you probably caught it, where it starts to get a little lost. But I mean, regular drivers do that every single day. So for the car to do it itself, kudos to Hyundai for this self-driving feature. Now rolling into my final thoughts on the 2022 Hyundai Sonata inline. I just want to give props where props are due and Hyundai best car in the game. This car, I feel like its closest competitor would probably, finally have to put my hand on the wheel, will probably be the Camry TRD, uh, simply because that has more bits to help the car handle better. Um, and of course it comes with a very powerful uh, V6 engine, 301 horsepower. But this is a livelier engine. Um, the brakes on it, I don't think I discussed the brakes at all. The brakes are beefy on this car. I mean, they feel, great never or i haven't experienced any fade um they stop on a dime they do what you need to them do as soon as you press down on that brake they have a great bite to them um and then of course you have your handling this car handles again amazingly so it feels like a complete package now you can tell again it's not a full-on end model which i don't think hyundai wanted this car to be but they wanted it to be more than just a larger end engine on a standard chassis uh, if we compare this to, for instance, the Honda Accord 2.0T, which is kind of the uh, performance family sedan that people usually go after. Brilliant car, brilliant engine. That 10-speed transmission is amazing. Um, the fact they used to have a 6-speed, also definitely amazing. However, when you get to really pushing that car, that suspension just falls apart. The brakes, everybody know, well, if you don't know, Honda brakes are not known for being the most powerful. Those brakes, they fall apart. The car just really begins to fall apart uh, after a certain point. But with this car, Hyundai made sure that everything came together really well. So not only did they add uh, additional power, they add additional braking power, they add additional handling power, they added additional everything with this car, more comfortable seats. The seats even go a little bit lower than in the standard Sonata. All those little details to kind of give you that really special sporty feeling Hyundai decided to do with this car. So for me, this is the best car that you can get uh, bang for your buck, starting at around $34,000. This is truly, truly a bargain performance sporty sedan. All right, folks, and that's all I have for you today. I appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, definitely hit that thumbs up button. If you loved it, hit that subscribe button as well so I can continue to get more super cool content like this vehicle right here. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.